Chapter 4 Scout Galley poured the ticket stubs into a brown paper bag, stapled the bag, and then locked the doorman stand. The theater was closed, and the last few movies were almost done playing. She wanted to hurry and close her shift so she could catch the premiere of her friend's independent movie. Duke, an ex-employee, had somehow managed to convince the manager to let him screen his movie in one of the auditoriums after its movie ended. A bunch of Duke's friends were already meeting in the auditorium. The movie was to start at 12 a.m., giving Scout only ten minutes to finish her tasks. Oh, the joys of working at a movie theater. Scout couldn't complain. She was lucky the theater was still open. With streaming services and kiosks on nearly every street, the theater business was suffering big time. There were rumors this theater would close sometime this year, but the managers denied them. Every time Scout heard these rumors, however, her heart hammered. Finding another job would be difficult. But she tried not to think about such things. She had a premiere to catch. On weekdays, she had to shut down all the projectors after the movies ended. She loathed long movies. But since it was a Saturday, the projectionist would take care of this task. As Scout took the ticket stubs upstairs, she thought about the strange incident with that pretty redhead. She'd frantically run out of her movie, looking for her boyfriend. She'd even gone into the men's bathroom, shouting his name. What was that all about? After she delivered the stubs to the manager in the office, she ran back downstairs to await someone. Sure enough, when she rounded the doorman stand and headed toward the lobby, she saw Taylor standing just outside. Scout opened the door and was about to close it behind her when another girl stuck her arm through the gap. Scout, startled by her appearance, backed away to let her in. I didn't know you were bringing Gina, Scout said to Taylor. Of course I'm going to bring my girlfriend, Taylor replied. She was an inch shorter than Scout, with a buzz cut that she sometimes let grow out. She wore a black t-shirt and tan shorts that showed off her surprisingly thick calves. Her small white converse made her legs look even bigger. Scout looked away. She felt the tingle of arousal, and the last thing she wanted was for Taylor or her girlfriend noticing. Gina pushed her black bangs out of her face, looking around the lobby. Taylor loved Asian girls, and Gina fit that bill. Scout liked the girl, but at the same time she was jealous of her. The movie hasn't started, has it? Taylor asked. Not yet, Scout replied. It's in Auditorium 5. Let me just relock this door. She turned and escorted them to Auditorium 5 two down from the largest auditorium showing the new horror sequel. She could hear the constant booms of the action movie showing in six. None of the auditoriums were as soundproof as they should be, and she was always embarrassed when she saw movies with her friends, only to hear the sound from the movie next door. And forget trying to get a signal on a cell phone anywhere in the building. Scout, Taylor, and Gina walked into five. The auditorium was halfway full. Scout knew less than half of the people there. In the first row were people she definitely knew. One was Duke, the director. The other was Jaron, his director of photography. Do you want to meet the director? Scout asked Taylor and Gina. They nodded, so she led them down the aisle. Duke, this is my friend Taylor and her girlfriend Gina. Taylor shook Duke's hand, smiling, but Gina suddenly looked nervous at the mention of the word girlfriend. Scout didn't know if Gina was out, but at the moment she didn't care. Nice to meet you, Duke replied, not noticing anything amiss. He was very skinny, skinnier even than Taylor, and his hair was shoulder length. He pushed his glasses up the bridge of his nose as he said, I hope you enjoy my movie. We all worked very hard on it. What's it about? Taylor asked. It's about a group of vampire hunters. Nothing original, but it doesn't matter as long as you do something fresh with the material. Duke rambled on, as he usually did, when he talked about his work. Cool, 
Taylor said. She didn't sound like she meant it, but Duke didn't seem to notice. Nice to meet you. Good luck with the premiere. Duke thanked her as he turned back to his DP. How's your mission to save the world going? Scout asked Jaren. Jaren turned to her and laughed. Fuck you. And fine. I donated blood and volunteered at an animal shelter, thank you very much. He nodded to Taylor. About time I finally met you. Scout talks about you all the time. Scout shook her head subtly, her eyes wide in shock. Jaren noticed but didn't appear to understand. Is that right? Taylor asked, smiling at Scout. Yes, Jaren went on. It's always, Taylor said this, Taylor said that, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. That's great, Scout said through gritted teeth. Now how about you shut the fuck up? Jaren laughed for a second, but then stopped when he saw the expression on his friend's face. He looked at Taylor and Gina. The former was grinning. The latter was not. Scout turned to Taylor and laughed. He's exaggerating. I'll bet, Taylor said. We should get our seats, Gina said, not sounding the least bit amused. They went to the second row and sat right behind Duke. Scout walked up to Jaren and whispered, What the fuck, bitch? What did I do? Gina is Taylor's girlfriend. You practically just told her I'm in love with Taylor. No, I didn't. Scout shook her head. You're the worst roommate ever. You're welcome to move out. Jaren sat down and stuck his lip out. Scout laughed and sat on the other side of him. That look doesn't work on me. Sorry I accidentally told your crush you're obsessed with her. Scout looked over her shoulder. Taylor and Gina were talking to each other. Taylor had her legs crossed, and Scout couldn't help but stare. She could almost see up her shorts. Could you possibly stare any harder? Jaren asked. Scout looked at him. You notice that? I don't know. Do you notice this? He crossed his eyes, twisted his face, and stuck his tongue out. Christ, I didn't look that obvious. Besides, I can't help it. I'm a leg girl. Why are her calves so big when the rest of her is so scrawny? I think it's because she walks a lot. She doesn't have a car. Taylor looked at Scout and waved. She does have nice calves. Jaren whispered. If she weren't so gay, I'd hit that. Scout looked at him. That's the dumbest thing you've ever said. So, Gina doesn't know you and Taylor used to fool around before they got together? Hell no. Do you think we'd be hanging out if she did? Why didn't you and Taylor go out? Scout sighed. I don't know. She says she just wants to be friends with me. And if that, if we went out and it didn't work, the friendship would be ruined. Or some bullshit like that. She claims she's not friends with any of her exes. That's not bullshit. I'm not friends with any of mine either. Duke waved his arms to get everyone's attention. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming tonight. It means a lot to me. My friends and I worked very hard on this movie. It took months and everyone pitched in for free to help make my dream a reality. There would be no movie without them. The audience clapped. Scout sat down next to Taylor. Did you help with this movie? Taylor asked. Yes, Scout replied. I told them I'd help on the next one, too. Have you seen it? Not the final cut. I read the script, though. It seemed interesting, though a little convoluted. Duke continued for a few minutes, answering questions from the audience, and then the projectionist started the DVD, which was hooked up to the pre-show projector. The movie started. One hour later, it was over. The audience sat silently for at least ten seconds before Taylor started clapping. There were a few more scattered bits of applause, but not much. Scout looked around at the confused faces of Duke's friends, and felt embarrassed for the director. Duke didn't seem to notice. He was grinning like a proud papa.